The last of the three products is the company operating report. Um, I'm not going to go through this one in tremendous detail just because you have to usually go through with specific questions and the like. But I do want to tell you this. If you get into trouble um, in, in the simulation and I feel inclined to, to really get under the hood of your company and start giving you some very pointed advice, I don't go to some secret product that I have. I go to, to the same products you have and specifically a lot of times I go to this product and I spend a lot of time looking through this product. So there's a lot of information in this that you really need to mine. And one thing that I've not talked about uh, thus far is keep in mind on all of these products you have a help screen and sometimes if I see a number that looks out of whack I'll click on the help screen to have it uh, to get the, the textbook explanation of exactly what's involved in that number. So uh, the first page is plan operating report. A lot of this is not going to be news to me. It's going to be how much capacity did I have, uh, what about my plan upgrades, which again are all decisions I've made. Labor statistics, I can see them on an earlier product, but this is something I pay attention to. I'm looking for increasing productivity, and especially I'm looking to make sure that my um, price per, my labor cost per shoe are going down, down, down. And I had a chance to check that on an earlier slide, but that's something I certainly look for. Um, and I think about my productivity and it, am I having the effect I want? So you can see here I had a very small increase in North America and no change whatsoever in Asia Pacific. Well, it's good in that it didn't go down, but usually I'm always looking for the productivity to go up, but but not just throwing money at it such that my labor cost per shoe goes up. Anybody can throw money at stuff, but they're going to uh, not invest it wisely and they're actually going to drive up their manufacturing cost, which isn't smart. I'll tell you right now that it is entirely possible to be the highest paying company in the industry and have the lowest labor cost per shoe. And the key is, is that they figured out how to wisely invest in their workforce and get the most bang for the buck. Now, somebody may throw money at, at their employees and they may pay better than I do, uh, but always the key is the lowest labor cost. Um, this gives me a sense of my reject rate. Again, I've already had comparisons in earlier slides to let me, or I'm sorry, specifically in the footwear industry report to let me know how that stacks up. Capacity utilization, you can see I use the North America plant pretty strongly, not so much the Asia Pacific plant. So definitely uh, more money to be made there as I get them humming. Again, detailed costs on these things. This is where I go back and I check myself against the industry averages. And I research if it's not where I need it to be, why it's not where I need it to be. This is one of those um, pages that is deceptively uh, simple, but yet incredibly important. So this is history telling me um, how I did last round, it tells you I could have sold shoes in every, excess shoes in every region. So I talked about, boy, when you start seeing numbers around 200, it really hurts. So I I uh, suffered due to lack of shoes, could have raised my prices. But one of the things you want to keep in mind is down here is this, um, the issue of tariff per pair. This is one of those costs that become quite significant if you don't keep track of it. And there's one change I have made in your simulation um, that is not reflected in the manual, and that has to do with the tariff from the North American plants into Europe, Africa. Uh, contrary to much of the rhetoric uh, that we see in the political environment right now, what happened was the Trump administration signed a free trade agreement with Europe such that there are no tariffs on imported products from the United States to Europe. Um, and even though that seems like a very small change, you're going to find it's a very consequential change in the simulation as you go forward and make key strategic decisions. So you want to pay attention to, am I doing the best job of shipping the shoes from the right plant to take care of my currency adjustments, which there were none in uh, the practice round, and also to minimize my tariffs. So this looks like a boring uh, piece of information. In fact, it's very important. Now I get into some products that are going to give me a more detailed breakout on how things were comparing. Uh, I've already got kind of the big picture numbers in the footwear industry report. This allows me to dive into um, all of the various components of my expenses, both uh, branded and private label. <clears throat> Income statement, this is where I get to see more of, of where my dollars were going. 
when I get to this point, I really shouldn't see too many big surprises. Exchange rate adjustments can be a big deal. Um, but hopefully by now I've, I've kind of figured out what was going on in these and I, and I don't see um, any surprises here. Um, and so, again, just a good thing to, to go over. And then lastly, uh, the balance sheet. This is where I see the, the, the fruits of my financial decisions. You can see, again, I know this already, but I ended with cash. This tells where the various uh, loan payments went. I did not pay a dividend. Uh, I zeroed my investor's dividend, which is probably why my stock fell just short of the desired stock price. Uh, but all sorts of information you can get on where your money is going. So uh, I encourage you to spend time with each of these three products. And then what I'm looking for you to do after you've analyzed all these products, you now approach your decision screens with a plan. You understand how you did, and you've also gotten to the performance drivers, the why I did, and then you started to make some decisions about how am I going to do better. I encourage you to approach your next round of decision screens with a plan. Okay, I'm going to go to this star shoe. I'm going to go to this many models. Um, I'm going to spend this much in R&D. My pricing needs to be about this. And then you, you make some tweaks off of that, but you just don't show up at the decision screens and go, well, what am I going to do this round? Because if you do, your results just aren't going to be very good. Keep in mind, there is a second practice round uh, opportunity in the computer. I don't make a big deal of it. I encourage you to take advantage of it, but I won't talk about it. And then the data will reset and we will kick off. It'll reset on Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, the second practice round is Thursday night at 10 p.m. The data will reset Friday afternoon at 4, and then it wipes away all of the practice rounds. And it's all the way back to the beginning, and then the real season begins. I strongly encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions, because um, you, you uh, the BSG, there's a lot of points tied up in this. There's a lot of potential learning in this. So if I had to walk away with a final piece of advice, uh, for round one, you're going to be uncomfortable because you don't know what people are going to do on a pricing perspective. But I would tell you to not be incredibly bold, not be super aggressive. So let's say that you plan to go to a 10-star shoe. Great. Wouldn't go there in round one because there's always a chance that you're going to really mess up your pricing and drive away a lot of demand. So I would encourage you to make moderate movements in the direction you want to go. Uh, I frankly have some people that say they run a very stand pat strategy in round one and try to figure out where everybody else is going. Obviously, if everybody were to do that, nobody would figure out where anybody else is going. But uh, there's always great uncertainty with round one, but I don't encourage you to be super, super aggressive. That doesn't mean be Casper Milk Toast. Just don't think that you're going to win uh, the simulation in round one. In fact, I will tell you this and close with these words of wisdom. You cannot win the simulation in round one. However, you can mess it up and do sufficient damage to the, your, your company that you may never really have the opportunity to compete to be the overall winner. And on that happy note, good luck.